deal with airplane peanuts. You know, you come in here. No, do your you location you location shame me? Location. I, <laughs> you location shame me because I don't live in a fancy house like all your fancy friends, like Joe Rogan and everybody, right? You come in here, you I fuck my girl. You come in here, you know what I mean? Some major comedy and podcast drama going down last week is Brennan Schaub, Bobby Lee, Kalila, Tiger Belly, Brian Callen, the Fighter and the Kid, Joe Rogan, Tim Dillon, Dan Soder, the H three podcast. So many different characters and twists and turns, different accusations and allegations. We're gonna get to the the bottom of all of it it's confusing it goes back a few months and maybe it's still not over who knows but we're going to get to the bottom of it we're going to play every clip we're going to show every receipt and we're going to figure out what really went down between brendan bobby and kalila okay so back in january trash tuesdays comes out with episode 49 trash tuesdays is kalila's other podcast she does with annie lederman esther pavitsky um she does it with them and it's more of a female oriented podcast they talk about girl stuff whatever this and that they were talking about this guy this comedian who had hit on both annie and kalila in the past from kalila it came from dms which she said on uh trash tuesday was about three years ago um these same dms on, when she talks about them on Tiger Belly, she mentions they were like seven years ago. So there's a chance that they continued seven to three years, but there's also a chance that she that just misspoke different dates. Annie, though, said that this this guy, this comedian, is a unfunny comedian. After she said it's an unfunny comedian, Kalila goes, that's a big clue. That's a big clue. And then she says that this guy asked to walk him to his truck. So implying that there was going to be some sexual activity going down after, maybe a little blowy in the truck. She basically just trashes this unnamed comedian as well as Kalila. When guys do that, it makes me so like, you just think I'm that bitch? Yeah. I had a guy that was like, why don't you walk me to my truck, this married guy, where I'm like, <laughs> and we know him. I'm not going to say who it is. But um, he's like, I know him. why don't you give me a walk? Why don't you get like, you should walk me to my truck. I'm like, so what? I can blow you? <laughs> like what? Wait, like, who was it? Oh, but it's just like, it's like, why would I? Wait, like, I love that we have the same people that. Yes, that the same ones come want from. us to he walk for you. The, oh, he came for me so hard and we know his chick. And like the thing that I think is like at least a little Esther, bit better. <laughs> the fact, <laughs> Esther, he's coming for you. Don't worry. <laughs> that is, it's just crazy. Now that you washed your hair, maybe. Esther. It's, on maybe New now Year, that you washed your hair. On New Year's Eve while he was having dinner with his family, he was like, what are you doing tonight? This year? Maybe three years ago. He was like, what are you doing tonight? I was like, left him on red. He but was he like, knows well, I hate that I'm with my yes. in-laws right now. Do you want to go? He At did least that to that me. that is like, he thinks you're going to be a partner in crime. Like for me, I was like single. I'm like, why would I like, it's not like we're deviants together. It's like, you think, because I was thinking about like, if we go to your truck, okay, mm -hmm. like, let's say I was like in, which I was never in at all. <laughs> let's say I was in. It's like, I love this. so wait, we walk to my car. I finished my spot being very good at comedy. You <laughs> not being good at comedy. And then, <laughs> that's so, a clue. By the way, I don't want like to be seen with you. That's I don't. the biggest clue you could ever give. And like, so you're not good at comedy. And then you want me to walk you to your car, like, so I, let's say, okay, so I'm literally like, I, I leave a sea of adoring fans, okay? Like, I leave a sea of like people being like, can I take pictures with you? You're amazing. Where'd you get your outfit? It's Esther Club. You can get it on, or it's Sleepover by Esther. You can get it on her website and Esther on Ice. I'm like in the middle of just like joy. You want me to stop like what I've worked my ass off to do? You want me to stop doing that so I can walk you <laughs> To a car that's more expensive than the one I'm living in at that time. <laughs> to then, yes. to what? Suck your dick? Like, I'm not coming in this situation. Like, what is this? <laughs> Where's my orgasm in this scenario? There's no. What is the incentive? But I'm, that's what I'm saying. I'm like, what would I get out of this? Mm -hmm. That I get to suck your unfunny dick? Like, I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just so I traumatized know. by, even when you say his name, just like <laughs> years of. And I, I have the, I still have the receipts and one day I'm going to just submit it to Dumois. So two weeks after that, Brent Schaub goes on Flagrant 2 in an attempt to uh, promote his special. Andrew Schultz asks him, when are you going to bury the Trash Tuesday beef? What's going on with Trash Tuesday? Brenshaw basically says there's no beef. He denies that he ever hit on Annie Lederman or asked to walk her to any truck or try to do anything. Basically just says the whole thing is made up. There's no beef. I'm good with Kalila. I'm one of Bobby's friends. Mind you, they're talking about this after the supposed phone call, which we'll get to later, had already occurred. What's with the Trash Tuesday beef? When are we going to settle the Trash Tuesday beef? It's settled as far as, the, you know. Did you online. try to walk 
Annie Letterman <laughs> to your truck. No, it doesn't make sense. No, no. Yeah. It doesn't make sense. <laughs> no. Okay, so then follow up. Why, did it, why does it not make sense? Why does that make sense? He, he, you know, he, he, you know it's, it's, it's her perspective. And I get it. For, perspective. For, for it to get back to me, it has to get out of control. As far as the Annie stuff goes, that, that, that's where I do have to defend myself. Okay. I have to, you know, sh you guys didn't say my name. Right, I get, or but you alluded we did it. to me. She, uh, the line was, "What am I gonna do? Suck your unfunny dick?" And then I, yeah. I came back. As with, far as me, and but she, uh, again, I, I didn't see it. But as far as she's saying, I, I asked her to walk my car, or give her a, a ride. No, I, I think that. I you know I cannot speak for her. Yeah, I, wasn't I can there, only that's tell I'm you. Saying. I'm saying I can only tell you what was said on that particular podcast. And, and again. If that's how she feels, she's validated to feel like that. And I'm telling you, that's, that never happened. What was said was that there was a guy. He was unfunny. I came back with, oh, that's a big clue. And that's something about a peach emoji. And then... Okay, but my thing with that, Clyde, do you think that's nice? Oh, no. Mm. But I didn't say your name. But it's... it's hang on one second, Brendan. Let me, let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. If we're having this discussion about something that happened in the past and we're having a giggly little girl talk, mm -hmm. where is the crime in that? There's no crime. You can do whatever you want. Right. I have no issue with that. Go ahead. Okay. Yeah, no issue with it. All right. I'm, I'm, I'm just saying, is that, is that nice? That's all. I'm I saying. have gone to you and said, if I could go back, if I had known that a tiny little giggly girl talk was going to spiral into this, I would have wired my mouth shut. But in my heart of hearts, while you may think it's not nice, and now I admit, not the nicest thing to say, it was just an anecdote. Sure. So that was I didn't think much of it uh -huh. on saying that because hitting on someone is just simply not a cancelable offense. That was my justification for it. Who the fuck cares who hits on who seven years ago? I had fake tits then. They were shiny. You <laughs> liked them. You DM'd me. You said sorry. Fuck it. Right. As far as Kalila goes, you know, me and her had a long conversation on the phone. Right. We are good, man. Yeah. No one's suing anybody. I, again, That's these, what I they, they said that you That's were suing. No, no, no. These, these narratives uh, online, you know, yeah. it's 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 a it's a you know, it's like a fucking soap show. It, it, they want yeah. this drama. There's no drama. Like Bobby Lee is one of my close friends. I, me and Bobby talk all. No one's been more supportive when I started than Bobby Lee, dude. They, they said that you had like some dirt on her or something like I that. Have, like, I have no dirt. I don't, I don't know. So like, where me, they're me making, don't know each other that way. They're making this up or what? Yeah, but when it comes to Kalila, it's like I don't know. Again, I don't. I don't subscribe to social media. So if she's getting that news, yeah. and she subscribes to it. I would be upset too, and that's why I told her. See, this, I'm like, I yeah. get it. So, I mean, you know, some stuff you don't have to tell the public. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm me and Kalila are cool. Me, Bobby's one of my closest friends, man. Yeah. So it's like with that stuff, and you got to realize when I was coming to comedy, and again, I get all of it. When you have this, do you drive a truck? No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. What you do don't you even drive, drive a yeah, truck. I, what no. do you drive? Hold no. on. You don't even have a truck. No. Here's no. I have a Bronco that I got six. Eight Bronco's months ago. A truck, oh, no, that's eight months ago. That's eight months ago. So you didn't own a truck before then? No, I, I had a truck. No, hold up. I, had a, I had a truck. I had a truck. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. How now, no, I had a truck, but here, here's, here's the thing with that. But did you park in the comedy store parking lot or did you have to no, walk they, to they wouldn't let me park a different there. place? It was, it was, I got rid of it after two weeks. Back on February 23rd, apparently Brennan Schaub had texted Bobby Lee that he's been harassed on Reddit and online for the past six years that he's sick and tired of it, that he spent half a million dollars on monster lawyers who are going to get the job done at all costs, and that he has friends in dark places who are going to make sure that this is all resolved. Um, he texts that to Bobby, and Bobby just responds with, okay, I'll tell Kalila. Bobby having nothing to do with it, really, not knowing what this is about, just like, all right, I know that you are beefing with Kalila because of these stories that they shared about you. Then the next day, Brennan calls Bobby, and tells him to tell Kalila that on the next episode of Trash Tuesdays, he would like the girls to come out and say, Brendan Schaub was not the comedian that we were talking about. As this drama is kind of unfolding, it comes out that Brendan was threatening to expose Kalila for something, that he had this inside information, this dirt on her, and if she didn't come out on Trash Tuesdays and say that he was not the guy that was hitting on her and doing the walking me to the truck thing, if that was fake, if he wants them to say that on their platform, 
or else he's going to release this information. And that information was that Kalila and Bobby had started this open relationship that she was seeing another guy in Hawaii. I'm not sure if Brennan knew that Bobby knew, but he definitely didn't know that the other girls on the podcast knew and that it was kind of already in the public. Um, so they were not threatened by this information, uh, but they were also di- were not willing to share this you know, on their podcast with the public. So they ended up coming out and saying that in H3, kind of getting ahead of the story. But this was the information that was apparently weaponized against them by Brendan. This is also just a side note. I have always wondered, you know, watching their show for many years, what would happen if they broke up? Like, Kalila just leaves. Sh- like, obviously, it's more of Bobby's show. Like, Bobby is the headlining com- actual comedian name that we're going to see and does most of the talking. I'm sure Kalila has a lot to do behind the scenes and stuff. You know, she says it's her business a lot and is very, very proud of tiger belly but i always wondered like if they broke up i wonder what would happen to the show and it turns out they were broken up for a few episodes and like fully broken up not even open relationship according to kalila and they just kept going on as co-hosts so i guess that answers that question tiger belly uh will will be safe no matter what happens to bobby and, and kalila's relationship moving forward no, i didn't text by that me and bobby spoke on the phone spoke on the and phone. he said i didn't he said i said can i said dude I'm getting a lot of shit about this. I'm married with kids. Mm. I said, it's not good. I said, in Bobby's exact words were, I'll fix this. Whatever that means. Okay. So we didn't, we didn't confirm nor deny. Um, we figured it would die out in a week anyway. Agree. That's um, on March 3rd, you text Bobby asking if he's handled the quote unquote Kalila shit yet because you're still getting negative comments. Mm-hmm. In this text chain, you said, I don't want to have to get nasty with her, but if I have no choice, this is all direct quotes, I can def play that game. And this was referring to the months that Bobby and I were in an open relationship, thinking that that was somehow going to directly hurt me yeah, I, I, obviously obviously i mean it's like you know the open relationship you and i we ca- we were that's not for the pu- was for the we even for talked about it. it's not for the public consumption right because it was delicate it was a delicate thing he was right? also we were, we were going back on different, drugs there's so many different there's things. so many different elements, elements to, it. to it right there, it was a dark time it was very fragile so it we was had, you know we actually it, broke up for a while yeah in so, fact schultz knew that because when schultz came oh, here we yeah, were broken up yeah so and you guys did or didn't talk about this on the pod we never we talked this, this. The, the first time we've ever talked about it out loud was h3 which is a couple of days ago yeah okay mm. so and um it's something that I was going to die to the grave, you know? And so that's and again, what she's living. this would have all been solved if you and I would have talked direct like we did a week ago with your timeline. But before you go on, though, yeah. real quick, can I say this? Yeah. The information I got, that open relationship, that's not a, it's not like anybody did a crime. That That's not really breaking news. I can't hold that over your head. The other information you gave me was is, is the, the bad one, which I don't want to get into. Okay. Okay. That I don't want to bring up. That's Wait. not fair to you guys or, or anybody. We can get into that. Wait, what is that other thing? Yeah, we can get into that. The other. Wait, hold on. Let me. Let me oh, actually. Yeah. Probably. Let me. Let's assume that it's the same old narrative of me being a gold digger and stealing money from Bobby. I mean, is we, it within we, those lines? We talked about it. Yeah, you and so, I had spoke about this, and you told me. Oh truth. yes, I mean, let's yes. let's be real. That is an old, tired story. Bobby, call your accountants. So then, on April thirteenth, there's a Trash Tuesdays live stream where uh, Kalila, Annie, all the girls are on there, and they're talking about how they might be sued. They might be being sued by a bigger comedian, a bigger podcaster. How there's this podcast drama, and it revolves around a podcast with three girls that are being sued by a bigger comedian. Now, why did they think they were being sued? Because of the text that Bobby had showed Kalila about Brendan Schaub saying that he's hiring $500,000 worth of monster lawyers and his friends in dark places. And also apparently because there was an article in this gossip website, um, Armoire, I forget what it's called. I should probably just look up what it's called real quick. It's in these clips. And I, I have the, I, I'm going to just submit it to Dumois. Dumois. It's called Dumois. Not armor. <laughs> so is they read this thing on Dumois, which is a gossip website that said that this podcast with three girls is being sued by a bigger podcaster. And they apparently just assumed that the article was talking about them. Now, something interesting to note is earlier in this video, when Kalila is talking about having all the receipts of DMs with Brendan, she joking, <laughs> jokingly throws out there one day she would love to send it to Dumois. Um, 
coincidence, probably, but I've never heard of Dumois in my life. And it, it's funny that the, the place, the gossip website she was joking about sending all this stuff is what leaked something to cause her to think she's being sued. The other thing is I've never been sued, but like, do you not know that you're being like, doesn't someone alert you besides like a celebrity gossip website that is half full of like not true shit anyway? Like, wouldn't you know that you're being sued immediately, like before the public or before a gossip website? I don't know how being sued works. I just feel like maybe the Tiger Belly lawyer would tell them exactly, hey, you guys are being sued. Like you, it doesn't seem like something that you have to like guess. Like, oh, I think that might be us. I think he might be suing us. Like, wouldn't it already be in the middle of that? That might be completely off base. I don't know anything about that, but that's just what I was assuming as a young boy. I don't know. So Dumois is a celebrity like gossip account and a couple, maybe about a month ago, they posted something about our show. It This post on the go gossip site said like this popular podcast, which we were like, hey girl, thanks for calling us popular. <sighs> and uh, it said that we had a lot of controversy behind the scenes and tension that we had, we were a part of a big scandal and mm. that the tension you were feeling was real amongst Nobody us. Nobody felt any tension. But that scandal that they were referring to had nothing to do with the three of us. And it was because Go ahead. Uh, uh, it's potentially we were threat being threatened uh, a lawsuit, uh, and I'm like scared to even say that out we loud. We can't really. We just won't say the name, right? But we we'll won't. Just... Yeah. But someone was like behind the scenes threatening to sue us. Even the thing that started it all was really just an anonymous anecdote. And I'll that say this kind of to like that person, up, yeah. to that person who threatened us. I'll say this: You think you have a one over me? I fucking dare you, motherfucker. <laughs> I dare you. Let it out of your chest because that is actually not a real threat. You think you're threatening me, but it's kind of that information's already out there, you little bitch. Can, yeah. no, can confirm. Yeah. There's she yeah. can confirm. She can confirm. Bobby can it's confirm. It's just also, I just want to say this like, my currency is not money. My currency and where I see value power is in jokes. So. I'm rich and you're broke, bitch. So come <laughs> after me. You've got nothing on me, you unfunny piece of shit. There was a Dumois article that said there's um, a girl podcast that is going, to a uh, going through a lot of internal trouble because a much bigger podcaster is trying to sue them. Um, we assumed it was us. Also based on the text that um, Bobby had showed me about you ha spending half a million dollars on monster lawyers, I assumed, oh, of course it had to be us. Wait, hold on. So there's an article where a big podcaster is suing three and girls? Dumois. Well, it's on Dumois, right, George? What's that? Dumois is a site that um, picks up like insider information about either like celebrities and whatnot. I think they picked up on the drama of... Um, just the whole Trash Tuesday podcast. And and in in the art they don't say any names or anything? No. Okay. But they, yeah. they kind of add like little hints and stuff mm. along the way. They give you enough information to sort of yeah, anyways. Mm. Um so during that live show, the girls and I talk about someone possibly threatening to sue us. We were really under the belief Based that you were off on that article. No. Two things. The screenshot that you had sent Bobby that you're coming after Everyone mm -hmm. spending half a million dollars on mm -hmm. monster lawyers that you have friends in dark places mm -hmm. that you were. Um, and then that, that article added to that, you're saying? Correct. Gotcha. Um, and then I add, I add during the live stream show, I said, this particular someone thinks he has dirt on me. And I say, go ahead, and, expose me. And, and I wasn't very nice. And he calls this person, this someone unfunny. Mm -hmm. And I said, and I called that person a little bitch. And the outcome, of, the outcome of that, it fueled more harassment towards you on Reddit mm -hmm. after the live show. Mm -hmm. Then on April 19th, some shit happened with Andrew Schultz. We don't get to know about it because Kalila says she doesn't want to drag him into this. But it's like, come on, man. Andrew Schultz is a character that we really want to know about in all this, dude. Like, come on. That's a good character. I will skip April 18 because it involves a DM from Schultz. And I don't want to drag him into this. Okay. How are you going to bring that up and then just brush over it? Don't even bring it up if you're not willing to talk about it. I hate when people do that in real life. When they're about to tell a story or say something and they go, ah, never mind. And you're like, no, what? And they go, oh, no, no, never mind. I, I don't want to get into it. You're like, well, then, then why did you say it? 
I hate that. Anyway, a few days after that, which was about three weeks ago from today, if you're trying to keep this all straight in your head, three weeks ago from today is when Brendan and uh, Brian Callen called Bobby. And apparently this is a really aggressive phone call. This is like one of the main things that people are upset about. Um, Brian Callen and Bren Schaub called up Bobby, basically threatening his career, saying his career is over. They're exposing him. They're going to tell Rogan all the stuff that he's doing, that he's the mastermind behind this subreddit for the last six years, sending death threats and hate to Brendan and his family. And it was a really, really aggressive phone call, which I just think it's funny to imagine like a three man phone call with two people like screaming at the same time, like holding, holding the phone, like sharing it and just trying to get their own thing in like, fuck you, Bobby, you piece of shit. I'm your career's done. And then someone, yeah, yeah. Like it's just one phone and they got to like share it. And then they're also trying to hear what Bobby's saying. And they're like, wait, my turn. I got, I got something good to say. Bobby was willing to brush this all under the rug. You know, he was never going to bring up the phone call. He said, but on H3, they went on the show. Him and Kalila went on the H3 podcast. He brought up Brendan Schaub. Bobby just had really nice things to say, how funny he is, how how much he helped him when he started in comedy, and how he's a good friend. That's what Bobby said. Kalila does not let it go, and neither does H3. He keeps like probing questions and like trying to cause this drama, which is kind of what his show is in a lot of ways, I've heard. I, I, I shouldn't assume that, but Kalila does not take the chance to end the conversation. When Bobby says he's a good friend, he's funny, this and that, and just is like, can we please move on? You can just see the wheel turning, and she goes, oh, one more thing. And then she keeps saying one more thing I'd like to add until it turns into this 40 minute clip of just all laying it all out there, you know? And so I don't, I don't know if the flagrant two clip would have started this same war as what happened on H3. It was a phone call with other podcasters and it was, that's um, some bullshit. They was, flogged you, bro. Not flogged me. They threatened my career. They called me a coward. A pussy. You've always been a pussy. I'm sorry. What? That's unacceptable. No, yeah, and and, and um, Black man. they said they would expose me. They said that That's all these things. And I was in Oklahoma shooting another, a show. And I was at dinner. And I was by myself. And I was getting this. It was very traumatic for me. And it was based on whatever they did on the live. Now imagine now what's going to happen with now this. I actually think we should, I, I could call him right now and get clarification. No, no, do not call him right yeah. now. That's Wait, we're okay. Him do. and I are okay now. I, don't, I doubt not, it. I'm going to say this. No. After this, no. you will not be okay. <laughs> I agree with that. I promise you this, and this is this has opened, no, 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 no I'm not fine. I'm fine. Or I'm totally fine. I'm totally fine. But I'm just saying, <laughs> that this has opened up a world home. I'm not a pussy, right? I'm just saying, the thing is, is that you guys don't do stand up, right? No. Right. So I'm always around them. Yeah. Right. I always have. So I'm trying to play it politically. Right. I feel like I was assaulted for something that I didn't do at all. I don't know even know what the Wait, fuck they're talking. You truly about. have nothing to do with. It. I have nothing to do with. And yet I was mm -hmm. being. You know what I mean? Um, they put it I all have, on you. Right. Because they're using you to try to control what right. what Kalila's doing. Right. Right. So um, you know, I you know, I went to therapy and uh, about it. You know what I mean? Really? Talk about it yesterday yeah. because it's like it was just so traumatic. And these were my friends, and I had no idea what the fuck they were talking about. Right. Wow. And so my whole thing was. Let's never talk about it again, ever, right? And let's just brush it on the war rug so that I can go to comedy clubs and look them in the eye and be cordial, right? But now, right, this is a whole nother fucking thing. So when you guys called, you, um, it was you and Brian, and um, you said that, I, um, that you guys, my career was going to be over. Um, that you guys have evidence, you know what I mean? That um, that I'm some Reddit mastermind. That, that there's you have h files and proof that um, you can trace, you know, me from Reddit back to my house, the URL, you know, um, IP address, the IP address, and that I um, have been for five and s or six years have been. Um, coyly and and you know mischiefly you know you know contributing to threads that were um not contributing what didn't you say it was well from what you had said that we were responsible responsible mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and that um 
you know, that you were going to expose me to Rogan and all these people and that I should get a lawyer and that I, um, I mean, this is what you, you told me. And, it, and also just mind you, it was at a level 10 of rage. It wasn't like a soft spoken, like, you know, very I mean? aggressive. Yeah. It was extreme. You know what I mean? Threats. And then. You called Kalila things I don't even want to, want to mention. I did not. I know you didn't. I I would, I, and I haven't heard what you guys said. I I don't talk like that. I would never call Kalila that. That's right. not in Brandon, my verbiage. Brandon, you called me that on the phone call we had. I did not call you that. Brent, you I did not. No, but you don't know what you don't know what he they said. So you can't. Uh, it, it, this, Brian apologized. What Brian said on there, and even I told him that was too. That was a lot. It was a lot. Yeah, it was a lot. But what what I found to be. Um, heartbreaking was going into a character assassination where you were saying not you in particular i don't even know remember what because i was such such in 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 such, i was so trembling almost um calling me a coward weak spineless um and my only defense to that is, is that i just have my own way of dealing with the world you know what i mean because i um grew up in such a traumatic childhood I, you know, I try to be passive and I try to not, I mean, I'm afraid of confrontation as everyone knows in terms of my character. And, um, you know, I said to Brian days after the, that assault, um, that yeah, I no longer want to be a fr his friend. Mm -hmm. Um, and did you guys speak on the phone or yeah, we did. Text? Yeah. And he we apologized, he said, yeah, he did apologize, yeah. but, um, yeah, I mean, he doesn't expect you to be his friend. Yeah, oh, it's yeah. not. It's done. Bobby Lee is somebody I love very much. We both do. Yes, but Bobby, but people have been talking on, uh, he, he went online and he, he went on and talked about somebody who spoke to him in a very rough, bullying manner, okay? That wasn't anybody but me. I'm the guy. I'm the one who did it. Not, not Chris, not Theo, not Sam, not it was me, me yeah. okay? And the re and now 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 here's the second thing I want to say. Bobby is 100% right in his anger at me in his in how he felt and I'm 100% wrong. I take full fucking responsibility for the way I spoke to him which was wrong. There's no excuse, okay? And, and now I will give you, now having said that, let me say it again. And this is what I said to Bobby. I, uh, Bobby, if when I think did you, it, when did you talk I to spoke him? to Bobby, I tried to speak to him after you spoke to Kalila. When I spoke to Bobby, I said to him on the phone, I believe you. And then I thought, I don't know Kalila. I thought that she was, and, and, and let me just say this. And I'm going to, I'm going to explain this, but I want to first own up to everything that I did. Cause what I did at the end of the day, the way I spoke to Bobby, who is somebody I love who didn't deserve the way I, nobody deserves to be just attacked. And I'm gonna tell you where I was wrong and I'm gonna get specific. But let me start once again by saying, me, I'm the guy, okay? I take full responsibility. I was wrong, I said this to Bobby. I called him up and Bobby read me the riot act. I think if he had been in front of me, he would have fucking punched me. And, and he's justified. And I said, Bobby, you're absolutely right. I apologize. I was wrong. Kalila also is saying one of the bigger issues in all this is that after all this shit went down, Brennan Schaub flew to Austin to tell Joe Rogan about all this and to expose Kalila and Bobby and Tiger Belly and to tell Joe that Kalila is a gold digger and stealing money from Bobby and also to tell him that Bobby and Tiger Belly are responsible for all this Reddit hate and accusations and threats on him and his career. And obviously Joe's a very powerful person in podcasting, so this is um, a big accusation to weigh against Brendan and it would be a really fucked up thing of Brendan to do especially with not without knowing 100% if that's true or not to go tell Joe that that's going to change his opinion of these two forever you know uh, people that are trying to make it in podcasting that's a kind of crazy thing to do but i also think it's kind of weird to act like Joe's like the godfather of pod i mean in the way he is but in a way he's not like anyone can start a podcast you don't have to have Joe's permission Joe can hate your guts you're still allowed to have a podcast i also don't think tiger belly fans and jre fans even cross over that much Maybe Bad Friends fans do more because him and San Rogan and Santino have more of a relationship. But, like, I don't even think Bobby's ever been on Rogan. I don't even know what the relationship is. Like, if Rogan hated Bobby, he could still go about doing his show. 
but it's still a really shitty thing of Brennan to do if it's true. However, Brennan denies that. I don't really know what to believe. I can't think that someone would fly to another city just to tell someone something in 2022 with phones, you know? Like, he was going there to do a show to promote his special, um, but and then probably just brought that up. Like, if you have something to tell someone, you can just... No one is going to fly somewhere to tell someone something, in my opinion. However, he could have not just shared that dirt while he was there already doing this show to promote his special. So when you said, <laughs> I, I flew to Austin and tell Rogan about this? Yeah, that's my next question. No, can, can I come Yeah, yeah, this? yeah, yeah. Flew to Rogan to do the his show. Okay. This is uh, 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 aside from that. Okay, mm. copy. And, that that and, makes and, sense. And I want you to know, as, as I look you in the eye, when I would tell them, I, I would preface with every every time I go, I don't think Bob and Kyle are involved. The Tiger Belly email is on there. Okay. And every every single time. Never ever and I swear my kids never went, Kyle is a gold digger. Kyle. None of it. Can we just do a so, new segment real quick? So, you but, can but, still talk in the new segment. Go ahead. R right? <laughs> new segment. <laughs> <laughs> That's it? That's the segment? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was I just need to do it. I have, I have OC. That I was have your OC. tension breaker yeah, with yeah, that? Yeah, 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 yeah. But overall. George Lapp, that's also I wanted George Lapp. Overall with a timeline but, 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 but then also when you when you went to, so, you know, you got to remember too, Rogan's like an older brother to me. You When I do anything, I call Rogan. That's how I, that's how I operate. Right. Yeah, yeah. I asked his advice on this, right? And then, um, you know, he would give me his, his advice, how I should handle it. But then the, the other stuff is hiring a uh, private investigator. I don't know where the fuck you'd find a private investigator. And just uh, the same when you go, I mean, I would handle it like this. As far as pri a private investigator for what? What the fuck would I hire a private investigator to follow you to do what? I they make sense. So that's what bothers me. Whoever got that back to you. Multiple people corroborating each other's stories. But go ahead. Okay. But it, whatever you told him about me, whether it was... How or whatever version you have in your and head that can, what you told him. We can call those people after this and confirm my story. Oh, a thousand percent. If, you, if, love if, to. If, if that makes you feel better, it does make me feel yeah, better. Yeah, we can do as soon if as we're you, done with this, we will call those three people. Thousand percent. Yep. <sighs> Anyways, would love that. Would love nothing more. When you did tell version, uh, Rogan, your version of events, mm -hmm. I just want to know for my own peace of mind, did he believe it? I don't know. He, he to, to him, it's like you know, you're never gonna beat the internet, man. I mean, no, regarding me and Bobby. No, because I, I I told him it's not you guys. Okay, but everything else regarding the information that got back to me is that you told Rogan things, obviously, that were very slanderous about me. I'm gonna. I want to believe that wasn't the case. The, Put yourself in my shoes, right? That anyone you knew, and you heard that they went to Rogan and said that you were a thief, a gold digger, Definitely. and that you were responsible for criminal behavior on Reddit, things like that, would you like that? No. And how would you handle that? I would, now I'd call you direct. I'd call you direct, I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah. I'm telling you, Kalia, I know you don't know me, that did not happen. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. I, I don't believe you, but thank you for, for, for attempting to make me believe. That's all I can do. I don't, yeah. I don't know what okay. to tell you. Now, you might be thinking this all sounds insane. Brendan kind of sounds like an idiot right now. There's no way that Tiger Belly has been fueling all this hate on the Fire and the Kids subreddit. What wild accusations this is. Here's his proof. Here's what he's saying that he has. He's saying his team was looking into some things on the Reddit. And... Or no, it wasn't his team. This is where it gets kind of confusing. He's saying that's, that there was an investigation into the subreddit because there are some videos of child abuse that were just dropped into that subreddit that have really nothing to do with maybe the situation. And so some people were investigating those illegal videos on that subreddit. And during the process of that, found that one of the top six accounts for posting activity on the subreddit, that IP address was traced basically back to Tiger Belly is his claim and that they gave they provided 300 pages of evidence over the last six years this ip address or this email traced back to tiger belly was basically responsible for fueling the hate on this fire in the kids subreddit which um is very <laughs> hateful kind of funny but definitely crosses the line in a few ways uh subreddit dedicated basically to anti-brendan slander 
Kalila has been asking to see these documents for weeks and weeks, and Brendan has not been able to send them because uh, he claims this is an ongoing investigation and it would be illegal for them to possess the documents, but he's more than willing to show them after the show on his phone. Kalila does not seem to believe that he's going to show them. Bobby seems a little more trusting. That's kind of where we left it. You guys saying you have nothing to do with it, right? So, but at the time... I was so upset because you've always been nice to me. Oh, you've always been nice to me. We don't know each other, but you've always been nice to me. So I was so upset because if it's someone random, that's whatever, that's what they're going to do. But if somebody that I know, I was so upset. I expect it from somebody I don't know, but somebody that I assume I know, that's where this stems from. The anger, I cannot emphasize how upset I was and hurt and deeply hurt because, it, it, again, I don't think you guys have anything to do with it. But where is but this hold on, But hold on, Kalai. I, ha I have the proof. Here, here's the thing. Did you, where's your briefcase? And, and I, I don't need a briefcase. <laughs> yeah, I don't need a briefcase. I wish I could laugh at that. Yeah. I don't have a briefcase. I have it all on my phone. The okay. reason I can't send it to you because the ongoing investigation. I can't. Okay. On uh, investigation for the b child abuse thing? For There's six counts on there that you're talking about pedophiles. You're talking about horrible shit. Mm. Okay. It's bigger than me. But they're going to that's going to be dealt with my thing for you. Do whatever you want with this, whatever you want. I I'm good, man. Okay. It's horrible. And I want to squash between us. Do what. And let me get this out, Bob. I know you want to talk. I'll show you the stuff that I have. You guys figure out what you want to do with it. This is what's interesting. Again, I don't think it's you Will guys. You show me now. I'll show you that when we'll we got. Blur, the, we'll blur this uh, off because we want to know. Because like, we, I'll show you after the show. I want the let, let me get, to think let, that let me, you actually showed us something you never did. Oh uh, yeah, I can. I can show it to you. Here's here's the thing. This is what's interesting. To me. Explain this however you want. When I notified you guys of the harassment and, and going back to Tiger Belly, that account stopped posting, took the Tiger Belly email off, and changed it. It's never posted again. Do you know how Reddit works? No. So you seem to have very clear convictions about this alleged occurrence from my company, all the while not really knowing how Reddit posting works, Brendan. So that's a little bit. Well, this this team knows. I promise you, this team knows. Okay. Well, I, 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 but, 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 we've but. been asking you to speak with this team, and uh, here here's what I have to say about this. From my end, here, from my end, it looked foolish for you to be this fragile over something some three girls said on a podcast it looked foolish so in my end the way i understand it is we need to come up with a bigger story about kalila to incriminate so that my reaction to that trash tuesday talk doesn't seem insane no that's God how no. i receive you're giving it. me too much credit you're giving me too much credit it, you're giving me way too much credit. I, I don't you, think you think i'd want to again i don't want this drama i've been harassed for six years guys Six years. But I think that it makes sense that someone who has been harassed for six years would feel like he's on the back foot and would swing in this way. It makes sense to me. I would only swing if they gave if this team who has nothing to do with comedy doesn't know you guys didn't show me this stuff. If that is in an active investigation right now, and that is the reason why you cannot show us that information. No, I can't show you. I can't I can't send you that the documents. So okay. You physically have them in your possession. So they I can show it to you right now. When we get off, I can show you. As soon as we get done, I will show you all the shit I have. You better it, spit shake on that, Brendan. I mean, why, yeah, yeah. why wouldn't I? Yeah. I mean, because I've been asking it for weeks. Yeah. And I've been asking to meet. I feel like you've long played me. Uh, uh, you've been asking me to meet in person? No, I've been I asking tried you, where is person. this? Where Where is this thing? Where is this thing? And you're like, I'm busy. Maybe tomorrow. I'm busy. Just maybe the, tomorrow. Just the docs. Because only and it's I'm like. not busy? Because here's the thing with the docs. It's like they're either not real or we have someone that somehow got a hold and hacked us. We just want to know for ourselves. If right. We and you should. Yeah, but yeah. that's and why it's very important it, we see these. But he, and it, here's my thing. I'm not accusing anybody in here. Mm -hmm. But let's say in some weird world, it's somebody that you, you, you know you're associating. You had no idea it was happening. I still don't give a shit. I just want to stop. Yeah. That's it. Okay. Okay. You deny then that you felt under attack by the girls and that you had to double down and create this Reddit drama. Like you deny that. I swear on my kids. 
Okay, so I you swear you on my kids. That's you're not, insisting that's two separate um, things and not correct. I'd not associated to one another. In any another. facet, that it wasn't a way to retaliate no, against I us. No, I swear on my kids. That it just I, so happens that five days after the live show, there are Reddit accusations about me. I swear on my life. I, okay, it, it's very. Con I agree. Very convenient. Very mysterious. Mysterious. Agree. Okay, my I, path forward. I, I'm, yeah. I'm telling you, I. There's nothing I love more on this planet than my kids. Okay. I swear on my kids' lives okay. that this team yeah. brought up the Tiger Belly email. Okay. Okay. I, I, I just love that you keep talking about a team and nothing has been produced. Well, not, but I've not but seen he it has it right but here. I have it right here. It. You're going to see it. We're going to see it. And then once we see it. No, Kali, okay, it's hold not, on. It's not allegedly. Uh, I'm going to show you as soon, soon as we get off here. It's a little unfair, though. We don't want to talk about this again, but... Okay. This is what we can do, okay? okay? We, can re we can look at it, okay. right? And when he leaves, if you want to come back on and talk about what Comment. we saw, then we can do that. Are you okay with that? Sure. Yeah. I mean, it, I, I mean it, de it depends how you go about it. No, the, I mean, know? the way I'm going to go about it is... Um, if there's levity to it mm -hmm. and there is something that we need to investigate, mm -hmm. we'll talk about that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? At this point, it's like, um, because what, like, like this, uh, I don't know what, uh, how it works, but I'm pretty sure that somebody could create an email with the name Tiger Belly, but be different. Than Not ours. with the official email. But, but all of you guys sound just like boomers who don't know anything <laughs> about Reddit. That's what you, Callan, and Shab sound like. You guys are fucking Reddit. You don't even know how it works. I don't either, but at least I'm not claiming <laughs> to be. At this point in the video, if you're even still watching, dude, you're probably like, this drama kind of sucks. Like, it's between Brennan and Schaub, who you might not really like. And really, it's just between him and Kalila. Like, Bobby's not even really involved in this. So one of the better things to come out of this, one of the actually funny things to come out of this is Tim Dillon and Luis J. Gomez commentating on the LA podcast scene and this drama and the gringo poppy and really just letting it fly and being comedians, dude. These guys get it. This, this is, I'm happy this all happened because of these reactions. This is what we need to get back to, dude. Not like this petty little drama of like, like subtweeting people on podcasts and shit. This stuff, this is real comedy. Do the credits on IMDb that people fuck with for the credit shop. Yeah, he so went funny. on Tiger Belly, and Bobby Lee's wife stuffed him like a turkey. She just, Brennan? yeah, like he to his face. Head. Yeah, she was like, after all the shit's going. Yeah, down. she said, like you said this, you said this, you said this. None of this is true. And he's like, yeah, yeah. She just wore him like a really? puppet, dude. It's wild. All over James. We're busy in that kitchen, dude. Orange <laughs> chicken's flying, Baba. <laughs> It's all shit that he says. They speak, they speak Shabanese, is what they call it. <coughs> Can we play Word Association LA comic scene? Sure. All right, ready? You gotta just fire it off. Don't be yeah. a pussy. Whitney Cummings. Drugs. <laughs> Bobby Lee. Korean. <laughs> I mean, it's the first thing that comes to mind. Brian Callen. Ruffier. <laughs> Gringo Poppy. Kind of brilliant, <laughs> kind of, kind of brilliantly, brilliantly funny in a way that no comedy special has ever been, because it's it's mysterious in a way because you're looking at it and you're going like, there's a lot of choices made yeah. and you don't know why those choices were made. Of course, of course. Yeah, the comedy store. Uh, fine. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. I can't name another word. I mean, that's, you know. Yeah. Well, here's what's amazing about the gringo poppy. This is what's truly amazing about it, okay? Please. You're watching it. And you're in kind of, it's, it's, you're in a little bit of disbelief. Yeah. Because it is, I, I, I wonder, and I know he's trying to get good at stand-up, and I respect yeah. the hell out of that. The question is, what, did, did it have to be a special? No. That's the real question. No, no, it didn't. It, yeah, no, he, and I'm not one of these guys who like that's not, hates that's, on Brandon. That's not like, shitting he's on a him. Good, nice guy, and, and I know he's trying to be. You know, like I, but I, the question I, is with that particular thing. You go, did that have to be? I said this on Real Life Podcast. He should have friends going because here's the thing. He is a charming dude, right? Yes. Um, and he, I, I think. I don't know at all, you know, but I, I think he, the, there's probably something. There. He's probably a funny. He probably makes his friends laugh, right? Yeah, I think that he's really great at. 
podcasting on that specific show for that audience, yeah. which they want MMA. There's an audience of people in America that want what he does yeah. and he does it for them. I am not that audience. Of course. But that's fair. But that's fair. And here's the thing. Yeah. We, we all go out. Because I don't care about. Yeah. Everyone stinks at comedy for the first five, 10 years. 20. Stand-up's even... kind of gay and dumb. <laughs> yeah. L let's be honest. Yeah. It's well, I, when I watch Brendan do that, it's like I, I, I go, here's a big, tough guy who I should just see in a Ferrari. And he should be able to rip people's faces off yeah. with his catcher mid hands. And I see him running around the stage going, oh. I silly. go, you're gay now. Yeah. You've yeah. become gay. You were, you Why were. Why are you gay? He was a fucking knight. He was, was a, no, he, he was, was a, listen, a knight. He was a knight. He's a knight. And now he's a jester. Now he's gay. <laughs> he's a gay jester. He's a gay man. He's a fully gay man. When you watch a special, he's like, Whoa! And you go, what? Why? What is this disease? of? Maybe they should come out next week. You're, what is this you're disease? Six foot, <laughs> you're six foot six. You're an Adonis. You could beat up 99% of the people in the world. You could kill men and fuck women. And you don't have to fuck these skanks at the comedy store. Fuck. Hot women. Andy Letterman. Fuck hot what the fuck women. is wrong with you? And he, instead, he's fully gay <laughs> on stage in Dallas in front of 45 people being like, the lion <laughs> is at my door. It's just, it's puzzling. The whole drama that's going on in the LA podcast scene it's one of the gayest things I've ever seen. This is like high school level drama so where they're like calling each other and they're talking shit and they're silly. threatening each other. And it, it's like, guys. In New York, the drama is all of 50. you can't afford your rent. Yeah. So it's actually real drama. Like the New York podcast scene is somebody being like, I am homeless. It's it's a weird thing. Yeah. It's a weird thing how everyone this is, is so in poor in New York. This is people in mansions talking shit about each other. In New York, the drama is like, my parents just kicked me off my the, the family plan and I'm 38. I'm 38 and I don't have a phone. Yeah. My roommate moved out and I was not able to secure another roommate for that room this month. I'm actually going to kill myself. And also, like, I don't really feel bad for people that are fucking millionaires. That right. Get, made fun of online i don't feel bad for you that's right you that's that's your fucking biggest problem i feel bad is for that people, people that on reddit have, are yeah. saying mean words about are you out of your fucking mind right. you're a millionaire right and you care about what somebody on reddit says there are people that's that crazy. cannot eat yeah there are people that don't have the money to pay their rent that cannot get their kids insulin my care. right <laughs> Now, so those those people, my audience, Jeremiah says, Watkins, <laughs> <laughs> we know them. <laughs> Jeremiah Watkins is doing the star maps in L.A., trying to show people houses. He's slipping signs. He's slipping signs. He's just trying to show people. He's selling fruit with Mexicans right now on the freeway. Jeremiah Watkins is trying to sell bottles of water on the 405. As for moving forward between these two, I wouldn't expect them to be going on each other's podcasts anytime soon. I don't think Bobby is going to be on Fire and the Kid very soon either. It's kind of weird that Stevie Weeby uh, hasn't been on The King and the Sting in a while when he was kind of like a main character before that, but I guess it's not that weird, you know, knowing what's all going on. It seems like they both just want to move on with their lives and their careers and be able to work together in a professional manner, but the friendship thing might never be there again, which... Makes sense. You know, I don't need an apology from either of you. Um, I I think you should look into the information I'll give to you after this and Absolutely. do whatever you want with it, you know? Yeah. And you know what? Guess what, Brendan? If there is any wrongdoing on any part of my company, True. You not only will you be the first to know, we will, that it could possibly mend all of this. Yeah, yeah. I mm. believe so. I want you. If you, if that, if someone in our company, you can fuck me, bro. Physically, you can physically fuck me, dude. No, I kind of hope it. <laughs> I hope it's you guys. Yeah, yeah. I also want to be able to go to the Laugh Factory and see you, and not and do if I'm after you at a club, still be able to do the show and bring you up on stage and work together in a professional way. In that way, right? Hundred percent. Right. Um. In terms of Brian, I don't know. Bobby, so I, that's and, and, and Brian told me to tell you this message. I can't tell you enough. And you're see, I'm firing the kid. He is so sorry. It, it doesn't matter. What I, he I'm, said no, I'm, I'm just telling you. I know. And, and he admitted that. Insane. He's like, I agree. Yeah. He was level 10. 
I mean, it was insane. He was level 10. I, I mean, I, I, yeah. it, just thinking about it makes me tremble. Guys, it was a phone call. It, 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 we had to clear some stuff up. I think there's some misunderstanding. People weren't listening. I apologized immediately after, and, and I, Bobby and I spoke, and I, he read me the riot act. He's mad at me. I apologized way before any of this. I wasn't, I didn't, this stuff didn't happen. And then I apologized. I apologized. I like the day after yeah, I you, called, yeah, I you, called again. Yeah, you called I sent me. a text. Yeah, you called. Yeah, I want this to be very clear. It's not like, like, man, I'm getting a lot of shit for no. this. You were, I mean, I, you, apologized I found way out two days this. after you're like, I talked to Bobby. I apologize. Yeah. I don't think he's going to accept it, but that's all I can do. Yes, I did. Yes. I, 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 I did everything I could. Um, I felt terrible. Be, but I did not threaten. Listen, the other thing is, people are saying I'm a bully, and so I get it. I, you know, it's all it's all good. I I, I didn't threaten. I didn't th say I was going to get goons. I didn't threaten his life. I didn't threaten his family. I did not do that. I I was yelling. I was mad because I I was defending my friend. I was working on information that I believed to be true at the time. But my my mistake was not giving him the benefit of the doubt or talking to him. And and again, I I apologize for that. But like like I'm a fan too. Yeah. I, hey, hey, I'm with you. Like, I'm with you. I, I was texting with Bobby this morning. I'm like, dude, like, this is getting crazy. Like, r now at this point, I'm, my, my, my family's getting threats of violence. That's, like, that's... You, like I'm, then now it's gotten to the point where my family, my fiance with the baby, she's getting threats of violence and she's afraid. Like, it's, it's fine. It's one thing if it's hate. But also, guys, I've been friends with Bobby for a forever. Yes, he's mad at me. I feel fucking terrible. As far as but the death threats, we had a conversation, and I owned up to everything. And he and he accepted my apology. He's still pissed at me, but he accepted my apology. So it was a phone call. Yeah, you made a mistake. You apologized. You owned up to it. That's all you can do, brother. That's all you can do. Neither one of us handled the situation right. You know, they but, didn't but, handle the situation right. But there right. has been, there has been really, really bad harassment and, and, and threats of violence yes, against that's how this you goes. for a very long time. Mm -hmm. When your team, when your team shows, sh when I see what your, when your team shows me what I, what I consider to be at least activity mm -hmm. and long-term activity coming from that area, that's what set me off. And I was like, what the fuck is going I'm, on? And I made them, now, a, I, now made a, are, I made them aware of that. Yeah. And they're, they're trying to get to the bottom. I, I will I say so. that they're not like, no, has, just like, no, stopped. but they are, but it has, it stopped. has stopped. I don't know. It didn't seem like they were that great of friends beforehand. What do I know? So maybe it's not that big of a loss, but it is just kind of sad to see people fighting like this and stupid dude. Like just be, f just be funny, man. Like Bobby didn't do the Reddit shit. I'm confident saying that, you know, just relax. Just have a good time. Like Tim Dillon said, this stuff's so gay. So that's it. That's the drama. Thank you for <laughs> for watching this whole thing. It was kind of a beast of a video because it's, it's a lot of moving parts. It's hard to explain. And the funniest part is what I found after cutting all these clips hours of making this video the the result of it all is that this is so stupid <laughs> subscribe to joke world to stay in the comedy loop the first media brand dedicated solely to following stand-up and comedians and comedians podcasts and their reactions and getting everything that you need to know from the world of comedy and from one channel subscribe to joke world follow us on instagram we're saying everyone free stickers if you dm us you'll get your free joke world stickers in the mail right away thanks for watching we'll see you wednesday with another episode of the joke world podcast the guest josh potter anyway that's my two cents um well i love you man uh, uh, I wish I could see <laughs> 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 <laughs>